Welcome again to the Henderson Church of God and Prophecy, where you have a right to be free and you don't have to take what the devil has to offer. God is for you yes. and not against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say a special thanks to the Jesus Faith Deliverance Church. Hallelujah. We thank God that we will be there real soon, fellowshipping with you. Hallelujah. Aloha, my lama pono. Hallelujah, we'll be in the islands real soon. But God bless you, hallelujah. But I know your time is valuable. So we're gonna go straight to the word of God for the people of God, hallelujah. hallelujah. Our foundation scripture is coming out of the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses nine through 13. And it reads, after this manner therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Every day is payday. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If I could use amen for a title today, it will come out of verse 9. Our Father. Yes. Our Father. Yes. I'm so excited to hear that he's our Father. Yes. But I can imagine the disciples when Christ began to speak. They already saw Christ pray to his Father. They saw Christ do miracles and, yeah. and healing and raising the dead. And he didn't say, pray my Father, but he said, our Father. And they was like, my goodness, he's including us? Yes. Yes, he's our father. Those that accept Christ as your Lord right. and Savior, amen, he's our father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Yeah. So that means that you're a child of the most high God. Yeah. You're a child of the most high king. He is the king of all. And he says, pray that thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Hallelujah. As we come before God in this prayer, we got to pray God that Father God, Father God, come thy kingdom and come thy will. Hallelujah. When you, be, when you go into the kingdom and you receive your assignment, God provides for your assignment. When they go to the king in the natural and the, na and the king and all the queen gives assignments, they provide the finances. They provide the way through. And he says here, when you come and you get in God's will, you get in the Father's will. He's going to provide for the assignment. Yeah. Come thy kingdom, come thy will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to realize, amen, who we are and whose we are. Hallelujah. Get a revelation and get it now that your, the God is your Father. Hallelujah. That's a close relationship. We're preaching today about our Father. To let you understand, hallelujah, who you are when you come down to things of God. Don't be so quick to throw away your relationship with God. Don't be so quick to stay away from the things of God. Because you're a family member. Hallelujah. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. As we go before God and we approach God, there's some things I want to bring out real real quick about our Father and what's going on in the things of God in the Gospel of John. And if you know me, I always bring scripture because I preach the word. Hallelujah. Let the word go forth. Amen. John, the fourth chapter, verse 22 and 24 says, you worship, you know not what. For salvation of the Jews, but the hour cometh and now is that the true worshipers shall worship who? The Father. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. We see here, amen, this is one of the few places that we find out what our Father is seeking. He's seeking. He's looking about for you to open your mouth and begin to worship God in the Spirit. If you want God's attention, if you want Father God to show up in your life, you've got to begin to open your mouth and worship Him. Amen. The Father wants to hear you worship. The Father wants, to, wants you to be around. The Father wants to dwell amongst your worship. Hallelujah. You want to get God's attention. 
begin to worship. That's why you ought to get up in the morning and give God worship. He's looking at you. Right. Give him hallelujah when you're on your way driving down the road. Yeah. Begin to worship God. He's watching yeah. you. He's seeking that. He said, oh, I hear some worship here. <laughs> hallelujah. You want God to move on your situation. Begin to worship. Sometimes you got to get off, come out of your, your workplace and go into the bathroom and begin to worship God. And right. things, when, when hell breaks out on your job, begin to worship God in the bathroom. Hallelujah. The yeah. pressure of the Lord will come. Yeah, yeah. Because you're the child of God. I remember every time uh, my, my daughter, when she was in the, uh, the, the, the drama team at school, every time they had a play, I would go there. I would go to the plays because she was in the play. But after she graduated, I didn't go there anymore. Don't plan on going there anymore. I went there because she was there. What am I trying to tell you? That wherever you're into, your Father God will be there. Yeah. If you're in trouble, God is there because you're there. Yeah. When you go to the doctor, God is there because yeah. you're there. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you go into the courtroom, yeah. God is in there because yeah. you're there. Yeah. But you open yeah. your mouth and worship God. Yeah. Because he's seeking sets to worship. Hallelujah. Remember that God is a spirit. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. I know there's some people that tell you you don't have to be spiritual. But God is a spirit. And he, he'll waken up your spirit. Your spirit may comes alive. Amen. You got to get you got to get, press your way to get in the spirit realm. Right. Hallelujah. He said, but the hour will come that now is that the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Right. For the Father seeketh such to worship. Yes. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must. Hallelujah. Worship him in spirit and in truth. You might as well get your spirit man alive. You might as well get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes. You might as well get filled with the Holy Spirit. Because you must. Yes. He, didn't, he didn't say you, you have a suggestion. You don't have an option here. You don't have an option in the world right here. He says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you're in a place where there's, there's no move of the spirit, if you're in a place of people not teaching you how to get filled with the spirit, if you're in a place they're telling you not to walk in the spirit, get out of there. Because you, you must yes. worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to be around the Holy Spirit and be around people who are spirit filled and be around people who, who encourage you to be filled with the spirit, singing in the spirit, talking in the spirit, prophesying in the spirit. We're spiritual people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our father, our father is a spirit. Hallelujah. That means the children got to get spiritual. Develop your inner man. Hallelujah. Build up your spirit man. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get dressed and we dress our body up real nice and we put $300, $400 uh, sneakers on our feet and all type of things and put nothing in your spirit and that's nothing in your spirit and you wonder why you're struggling but you've got to invest in your spirit, man. All right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Your hair looks nice but your hair can't get you through a trial. Your hair can't get you through these struggles. But you build up your spirit, man. Right. It'll be better hallelujah. if you spend less time. Hallelujah. Oh, that little sister got a business. <laughs> if you spend less time getting your outside done and spend more time getting the inside done, oh, then you can afford to pay for the outside. <laughs> amen, amen. Man. Hallelujah. It's okay to look good. Amen. It's okay to look good. Every now and then something got to be repainted. <laughs> hallelujah. But let's, let's, get, let's, let's tune up the inside. Amen. Begin to hear from God. Begin to be led. They said, my, my sheep hear my voice. If you're not hearing from the Spirit of God, you need to get a little closer. Spend some more time. Amen. Steal away. Make sure that you're being led by the Spirit of God. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. In 1 John 3, 2, it says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear which he shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I came by to tell you that are born again, that right now, not tomorrow, but right now you are a child of God. Those who are struggling and feel like you haven't gotten it right. He didn't say get it right. He said right now. Hallelujah. Today, when you're hearing this message, 
Today, you're standing here, amen, you can look at your clock and say, right now, amen, I got kingdom authority. Right now, I have the rights of, a, of, of the child of God. Right now, I walk in righteousness because I have on, amen, the breastplate of righteousness. I'm, I'm covered by the blood. Right now, I'm anointed. I ain't got to wait. Right now, I got power. Right now, God can answer my prayer. I ain't got to wait. Oh, no. Now, now, now. Right there. Hallelujah. Get now in your spirit. Oh. Hallelujah. Get now. You can defeat your enemy. Yes. Get now. You can operate in faith. Right now. Hallelujah. You got a right yes. to be free. Right. Hallelujah. Right, right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now. I was sharing the other day that you can take a little bird. Amen. That bird was created to fly. But when they first come out of the egg, amen, they're struggling. But they're a bird right then. Right then, they're a bird. Amen. They might not be able to flap their wings yet, but pretty soon they will. But the thing is, God has designed them to fly, but they're struggling with what God called them to do. So you're there, and you might be struggling. You're trying to figure out how to do it, how to walk this Christian life. But you are designed, no matter, God, that does not disqualify you from being a believer. That does not disqualify you for having the victory. That does not disqualify you for all the different things. The uh -huh. rights of a Christian belongs to you now. Uh -huh. the, the authority of the Christian belongs to you now. The blessings of the Christian belongs to you now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And pretty soon you're going to spread your wings. And pretty soon you're going to be taking off. Hallelujah. Just like that little bird. You're probably confused because you see all the bigger birds flying. And they're trying. And they're struggling to do the thing that God created them to do. And so you may struggle one day to do the thing that God created you to do. Don't stop. That don't disqualify you. Now, yeah. you have the blessing. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, starting at verse nine, it says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you again. Invest in your inner man. The spirit of God has got to dwell in you. Amen. It says, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Don't listen to people tell you it don't take all that. Don't listen to people that tell you that, that they're being filled with the spirit is not for you today. It's for you. And matter of fact, he says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You've got to realize that you're the you're, 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 your connection to the power of the Holy Spirit means everything in this walk with God. That's right. It says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised Christ up from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Hallelujah. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to live after the flesh, for if you, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says, For many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Our Father. When you say our Father, that means you're a Spirit-led person. Hallelujah. Because it says that the sons and daughters of God are led by His Spirit. Amen. Take time out to get the Spirit leading before you go out your house, uh, inquire, God, what do you want me to do? Inquire, God, thy is the kingdom and glory. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Inquire in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's time for the believer to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Verse 18 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage, and there is a spirit of bondage, but you have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, <laughs> Our Father, hallelujah, when you, when you feel the presence of God, amen, that just tells you that, yes, you've been adopted into the family of God because he poured out heaven best, the Holy Spirit, and you can say, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba means Daddy. That's a close relationship. We're talking about calling God Daddy. Hallelujah, Papa, Daddy. You're in the family. Know who you are and you know, know what you have. In the spirit realm. Right. Hallelujah. Connect in the spirit realm. That's the only way you're going to connect. Amen. Your spirit man got to be born again. Born of the spirit. Hallelujah. Because if you, he says, if you don't have the spirit, you can't even see the kingdom. 
It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 18 says, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Oh, uh, our Father. Amen. It's the Spirit that bears witness. Uh, get around people filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Press your way in. Amen. Receive the anointing of God because it's the Spirit. Amen. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That way you can't forget who you are. Amen. It's bearing witness all the time. Yeah. The anointing of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, it just bears witness. But it don't stop there. Verse 17 says, if children, then heirs. All right now. Now we got our inheritance. If children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. I'm an heir. Hallelujah. I was an heir, I was an heir, amen, to the land that I live in now, even when I was a little child. I walked on that land and said, our land. Come on now, I walked in the house and said, our house. Even though I didn't buy it, my grandfather bought it, but I'm an heir. And today I walk on that land and say, our land, my land. And guess what? My children walk in and say, our land. Hallelujah. Come on. My niece and nephew walk on and say, Amen. Hallelujah. So what is that trying to tell you? We're heirs of God. And Christ, well, hallelujah. So if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof is our earth. <laughs> hey, everything God got, we got is ours. Know what you got and know whose you are. Hallelujah. People say, who do you think you are? I say, no, no, who do you think you are? <laughs> hallelujah. This is our life. <laughs> This is our planet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because our Father owns it. It belongs to us. Yep. Hey, sinner man, don't tell me what I can't do in my own house. Yes. Don't tell me what I can't do in my own planet. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't tell me what I can't do. Yes. My Father owns the earth. Yes. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills. Yep. This yes. is our world. This is our land. We got to possess the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Know who you are. Talking about our Father. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. People start talking. We know we got bosses. Some of them, they think they own it. No, you don't. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is ours. This is ours. <laughs> and Luke eleven thirteen 13 says, If you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Okay. It's not a difficult thing. To receive the presence of the Lord. The only way to get born again is by the Spirit. But it's not a difficult thing to just ask. Ask for more anointing. Ask, hallelujah, for the true riches of God. He's going to bless you. Amen. But it says here, amen, he's going to give it to you. If you look at the whole, the, the whole, whole chapter, it goes into detail. But just ask, hallelujah. Right. Amen, amen. Talking about our Father. Talking about our father, hallelujah, amen. There's a story in the Bible called the prodigal son, but it's actually the lost son. And he, he went to his father and he said, Father, give me all the goods, all my inheritance. And, and, and he separated and gave him his living and he left and he lost everything. He got so bad that he was, bit, and he was feeding pigs and wanted the food from the pigs, but, but he couldn't get it. But then look at verse, Luke 15, starting at verse 18, he says, and I will arise and go to my father. Hallelujah. Guess what? You can always come home. <laughs> Things get pretty bad, but you can always come home. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And I was saying to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thine heirs. So we try to figure out our way. You better know it don't work that way. Because you're a child, you're a child. You're not a servant. But he says, and he arose and came to a father. But look at this. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him. What am I trying to say? When you start coming back to the father, he's already looking. He's been looking. He's been watching you the whole time. He knew everything you're going through. He's watching you. And he's waiting for you to come back. He says here, but when he was a great way off, when he was a great way off, when he first started to come, he already know. When you think you're a great way off, because you're down at the club, 
Somebody feel like they're a great way off because they're in an abandoned, in an abandoned house and, 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 and drugs are in your vein and, and you're in a bad situation or you're in a dangerous situation or you may be incarcerated or whatever you're going through. You might be coming off of a hangover, come going through a hangover when you're a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. We're talking about family now. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're talking about our father. A great way off. Had compassion. Ran and fell and kissed him. Hallelujah. That's how it is. Come on back to Jesus. That's, come on back to the father. He's looking a far way off and he's waiting for you. He, he, when you see he turn, turn means to repent, change your mind. As soon as you repent and come, he's already coming at you. Come on there. And then he practiced his little skills. So he says, and the son said unto his father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and again and in thy sight. And no more worthy be called a son. I don't want to hear that noise. Shut up, Junior. <laughs> but the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe. Come on here. Yeah. Now, do you know what your Bible says? He said, bring forth the best robe. Yes. And put it on him. And put a ring on his hand. And shoes on his feet. See, back then they didn't have credit cards. But they had rings with the family seal, and you can push it in some clay, and you can buy with that ring. He said, give me, give me the family credit card. That's what he said here. Mm -hmm. Give him the card, give him back another card. Oh, what? The family ring, bam. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, give the, not, not the raggedy robe, bring forth the best robe. Uh -oh. Y'all selling for, you're selling for a little bit. But God says he wants you to have the best robe. Bring forth the best robe and put on his hand the ring, the, the, on his, uh, put it on him, and the ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Look, and bring hither the fatted calf, not the skinny little cow. We're gonna eat tonight the fatted calf. Hallelujah. And kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. Hallelujah. Come on to the Father. We're going to celebrate. There's a celebration when you come back to the things of God. I know there's some believers don't celebrate when you tell them you're saved. Because they're not in the family themselves. Hallelujah. But there's a celebration. Every time you come into the Father's house, every time you come and worship before God, there's a celebration. So I heard somebody say, you don't do God a favor when you worship. That's not what the Bible says. It pleases the Father for you to worship. It pleases the Father for you to be in his presence. Every father wants his children to come yeah, yeah. home. Every, amen, a real true father is excited every time they see their family. Every time they see their children. And God is excited when you come in his house. And God is excited when you open your mouth and worship and give him glory. Hallelujah, he's ready to kill the fatty cat. He's ready to get the best robe. Yeah. Hallelujah, he's ready to take care of his child. Yes, know who you are and whose you are. Yes, hey, why? Because you don't have to take what the devil has to offer. God is for you, not against you. You have a right to be free. Yes, and that's the gospel truth. Yeah.